on doing and he's telling us the same thing today that he told them in that day Amen. and he it says in verse 25 and there was, went a great multitude with him and he turned and said unto them so he was walking and they was following him and he said you know what let me go on and separate <laughs> the saints from the age right now <laughs> If you follow me for the wrong reason, this, 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 what I'm getting ready to say right now, I'm going to shut it all down. You're going to turn around and go back. And the ones who still follow me, they'll be able to make it. Amen. And he says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sister, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross. See, Jesus bare his. But he said, whosoever does not bear his cross. See, we got a cross today. Mm -hmm. And come after me cannot be our disciple. And he, he gives us some great illustrations of preparation and making up our mind to do something and not turn back. But then in verse 33 he says, And likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has cannot be my disciple. I want to use for a thought today, a subject today. What is real discipleship? Come on now. Come on now. Come on. What is real? Real, not, not what we, you may take the season to the Lord. What is real discipleship? What is a real disciple? What, what does a true disciple of Jesus Christ look like? How does he manifest or she manifests herself in our daily lives? But more importantly, what does a real disciple look like in the eyes of Jesus? Because he's the judge. And he's the one that's going to decide who's a disciple of Jesus Christ and who is not. And we know he already told us that everybody say, Lord, Lord's not going to the kingdom. So everybody who say they be a disciple are not. He's already made that clear. So we need to know, it would behoove us to know. It's my job to make sure you know what real discipleship is. What it looks like. Now, in my search to understand how to reach the lost, because it's getting more and more difficult, as the Bible said it would, I came across something that was, I know the Lord led me to, and it, it was a book, and it's entitled Christless Christianity. 
saying they're Christians have no Christ in them. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Everybody say they're Christians. Ranked sinners saying they're Christians. Amen. But this term uh, was coined by the author of this book. His name is uh, Michael Horton. Michael Horton wrote a book about the same name, Christ is Christianity. And Christ is Christianity is an alternative gospel of American church. We, we, this is what we're doing in America today. Horton argues that uh, American church is headed to a version of Christianity that eagerly accepts the salvation of Jesus Christ. They eagerly accept that, but considers it to be just another benefit in the life spent pursuing the American dream. Right. What does that mean? Right. Oh, they eagerly accept it, right? Mm -hmm. But to them, it's just another way to get what they want in this world. Mm -hmm. The pursuit of happiness. Come on now. Amen. Christ as Christianity embraces only those elements of the Bible that the flesh finds pleasant. Wow. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, Lord, amen. We know who they are. All the churches who are saying right is wrong and wrong is mm -hmm. right. Everybody who's trying to make you act like you don't know the difference between a man and a woman. Jesus. You want me to look at a man and call him a woman, it's not going to happen. Come on now, yeah. say that. Because I know the difference. Say that. And yeah. I'm not going to pretend Lord, have mercy on oh. that it's different. Jesus. Christless Christianity, okay, resembles that others have called moralist, moralistic, <laughs> therapeutic deism. That is the belief that being good or nice is all that's necessary Lord, to oh please God. God. Mm. We hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm a good person. Oh, I'm baptized when I'm old. Yes, yes, sir. The work of Jesus Christ and his presence in our lives to them was unnecessary. Jesus. Amen. They, they feel that if they good, I'll weigh they bad. Not knowing that they have no good. Jesus. Oh, the Bible says we have no righteousness. Our righteousness is filthy rags to God. Amen. And we know what rag he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Christ is Christianity is watered down version of Christianity that is quickly replacing doctrinal truth mm -hmm. and purity. While professing itself to be biblical, Christ is Christianity presents the Bible as if it were a collection of faith. A bunch of unrelated stories that had a nice uh, moral ending at the end of it. Amen. But such an approach ignores the grand theme of Scripture, God's redemption of sinful man. We were sinful. God had to come and redeem us. He had to save us from ourselves. And rather than creating self-denying disciples, the message of Christ and Christianity creates adherence spoken of in 2 Timothy 3, 4, and 5. 2 Timothy 3, 4, and 5, we know what he said. Right? They love us of pleasure more than love us of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Which means they have no Christ in them. They have no power of God. They have a form of God. Which is fake, phony, and it's not going to get them to heaven. Many evangelist, uh, evangelistical churches today are moving closer to embracing a Christless Christianity. We see it all the time. Since the message of the cross is foolishness, amen, to the world, to those who perish. That's what 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says. Some church leaders de-emphasize the cross. Amen. And in, in, in every effort, in an effort to be seeker friendly. Mm -hmm. See, if, 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 if I just preach a feel-good gospel, mm. right you know, if I just tell you all the good things, if I never tell you, you need to repent. Come on now. Amen. You need to turn from your wicked ways. 
you need to pray. If I don't tell you you're a sinner and you need to be saved, then I'm, I, I'll be seeking. You'll feel good every time you come in here. As people listening to you, the preachers on TV, you know who they are. They're packing out the churches every Sunday. And no matter how you go in, you come out feeling good about yourself. You're not going to get saved, but you can feel real good about yourself. Amen. Uh, some pastors speak often of God, but they rarely discuss the person and work of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when the Lord Jesus is mentioned, he is presented as merely the ticket to God's blessing of our earthly lives. Mm -hmm. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Come on. He's mentioned that it's something for you to get something from it. You know. Just sow a uh, seed, you know what I mean? Just sow a seed so you can reap a harvest. You know, I, I can tell you to come up here and put all your money up on this thing. Let me walk across it so God can bless it. Let me put it under my feet. And then I'm going to pick it up and put it in my pocket. And you're going to go home broke. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But you got thousands of people gullible enough to do it every Sunday. Amen. And it's, it's, it's a travesty. God forbid. The Bible warns us in 2 Peter 1 and 2. Go to 2 Peter 1 and 2. That history as we draw closer to a close in history, much of the opposition to the truth is not going to come from outside the church. It's going to be an inside job. Right. Uh -huh. I know people who know better who are now dealing with falsehood in the church. And they know better. They know the truth. But now, they're dealing with the lie. Why? Because the lie is much more lucrative. And it brings much more people in the church. Amen. But in 2 Peter 2 and 1 it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, okay? even denying the Lord that brought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. Because people of God, the word of God will never change. Amen. He will never Amen. accept Amen. wrong as right. Amen. Amen. Verse 2 says, And many shall follow their <coughs> pernicious ways, <laughs> their evil ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be what? It shall be evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. See, when you talk about the truth of God's word, now you you, you become public enemy number one in the world. Yeah. They don't want to hear you talking about no truth. Mm -hmm. It's evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. If you tell people, no, my child is born a boy, I'm going to call him a boy. No, that's, you can't say that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the truth is evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. Acts 20 and 29, Paul warned them in, in, in the book of Acts, all the disciples. He said, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous rules enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And look what he says. Also of your own selves shall men arise. Also of your own selves, of your own church, of your own deacons, pastors, your own people that you know. Reminds me of, uh, what was his name? Lord of mercy. The one that he, he went all the way to the left. You know his name. Jim Jones? No, tell me his name. Pierce, uh, Carlton. Uh, Carlton Pierce. Yes. Yes. He went all the way to the left. For no reason. Just out of the blue. The whole church was this man. Why? Because he stopped speaking the truth and started speaking falsehood. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said of yourself, men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day in tears. Father, I warned you for three years I cried about it. I told you this is going to happen. Amen. 
External opposition is usually easy to identify in a church. Because you see the people coming from the outside in trying to cause trouble. But internal compromise. Mm. Internal compromise. Amen. From that door to this pulpit is like a rot. Amen. That may not show itself until it's too late. No. See, when you have when you see mold in your home, yeah. it's been there for quite some time. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. When, it, when you start seeing it. Oh, it's too late. You got to cut some stuff out of that. Uh -oh. Amen. And that's how internal compromise is. Amen. It decays. And when you see that decay finally comes noticeable, it has destroyed what was once solid. It has to be removed. Amen. Christ's Christianity is internal rot. It tries to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as a means of a better a better in itself. It turns his church into nothing more than a platform for self-help seminars. Amen. <laughs> and affirm, affirming messages. At the heart of Christ, Christ's Christianity is, is self-worship. Dressed up in Bible verses. <laughs> pieces to make it appear spiritual. You will never get that up in here. Amen. The Amen. truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. Amen. You're going to have to deal with the truth because the truth is the only thing that's going to set you free. Amen. Amen. Yes, it may convict you, but it'll save you. Amen. The Bible said we're saved by the engrafted word of God. Amen. Amen. But they ignore the ones about taking up the cross. They ignore all of that about taking up the cross. And follow Jesus. Everything we read, oh, they ignore that. You don't need to do all of that. So, what is real discipleship? What does it look like? How does it manifest itself? But more importantly, what does Jesus say that it is? See, this is where I believe we've gone astray, is where we're now uh, speaking what we think. Instead of simply just saying what God says. Amen. And in our text, I know it's shocking, but this is what Jesus was telling them. Amen. And I think we really need to know the answer to this very important question. Why? Because we profess to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Yes. So are you a real disciple of Jesus Christ? Let's see. According to the word of God. So in our text, Luke 14, 25 to 35, Jesus gives us a lot to think about. Amen. When he comes to the real discipleship. And it's all about commitment. It's all about the one thing that no one wants to do. We will commit everything to pleasing ourselves. But when you become a disciple of Jesus Christ, you can't please yourself no more. Amen. Amen. It's it's all about pleasing God. And if it's not, Jesus says, you're not who you profess to be. Yeah. Amen. So what we need to understand is a person who is not committed to something. The happiest people in the world is somebody who's committed to something or somebody. Mm -hmm. Some mission, something. You got to have something that you're committed to. Amen. And if you're not, then your life is not about anything. What is your life about? Amen. The New Testament calls those who are committed themselves to Jesus Christ. Amen. They call us disciples. Right? Yes. Traditionally, the word disciple has been defined as a student or a learner. Amen. However, the English word disciple comes from a Greek word. Amen. Matthias, which is from our root word, math. Amen. And it means thought accompanied, amen, with endeavor. All right. So a disciple is really someone who has thought, but is accompanied by action. So you can't say you're a disciple if you're not doing anything. All right. Amen. That's like saying you're a worker, but you don't work. You're not a worker. A worker works. Amen. 
Therefore, the word disciples in the New Testament has is not merely a, someone going to school, sitting down in the classroom, and being taught so you can gain knowledge. Amen. So the teacher can teach you. Amen. We accumulate knowledge. That's not what it's about. Real New Testament disciples is much more than that. And there's two things. Well, there's five things I want to share with you that, that a real disciple, okay, has to be a part of his life or her life, everyday life. Five things. And Jesus gave them all to us. Amen. But these it's two things that we have to get straight first. See, oftentimes we want to go and, and jump ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus was giving us a parable. Who does not sit down first and count the cost? Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's easy to start something. Mm -hmm. But everybody who starts something don't finish it. Yes. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of people started college. Mm -hmm. Everybody didn't get a degree. Mm -hmm. A lot of people was in school. Everybody didn't, 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 didn't graduate. Amen. We start a lot of things and we don't finish it. But what Jesus is saying, when you become a disciple of Jesus Christ, it's done. There is no turning back. That's what he was telling you. You got to forsake everything. He said, and he said, or you cannot be my disciple. Amen. But a real disciple, if we look at it, the first thing we have to take on is Christ's yoke. See, there's two things in the Bible that Jesus gave us as examples of discipleship. And both of them are made of wood. And both of them require commitment. One is the cross. And the other is a yoke. And you know what a yoke is, right? The yoke Jesus said in St. Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Amen. What did he say? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Amen. He said, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Then he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for me and lowly in heart, and you'll have rest for your soul. That cross is a symbol of submission. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. It was a symbol of submission. So when we surrender ourselves to the cross, we're submitting ourselves to God, to Jesus Christ. That yoke is a symbol of service. See, Jesus says, come and work with me. When, when, when they would plow the fields in that day, you had an oxen that was a lead oxen. Mm -hmm. See, the yoke wasn't the same for both oxen. Mm -hmm. There was always a lead oxen. And they would put the other oxen in the yoke with him, and the lead oxen would lead, and the other oxen would follow his lead. Mm -hmm. But the lead oxen pulled most of the weight. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly heart, and you'll find rest for your soul. Amen. He said, because my yoke is easy. I'll make it easier on you. Yes. I'll pull the heavy load. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yes. He said, my burden is light. He said, right now, you're trying to pull all the way to the world on, on your own. He said, let me help you. Yes. But in order for me to help you, you got to let me be the lead oxen. Come on, now. Right. Yeah. But I'll work together with you. Uh -huh. So he's saying, come, uh, if you want to be my disciple, come work with me. Amen. Because we know he said in St. Matthew 16 and 24, if any man come out to me, let him what? Deny, Deny himself. Yes. Then take up your cross right. and follow me. Amen. So Jesus gave us those two great examples. So we got to get that out of the way first. Because when we say we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. That means now we are focused on serving Him. Amen. We're focused on doing His will. Amen. Not our own. He don't mind us living our life. He don't mind us enjoying our family. He don't mind us having a good time. He'll even give you a lot of money. 
He don't mind you having money. Amen. He just don't want money to have you. Amen. 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 So some people he can't give a lot of money to. Amen. Amen. Because they will walk. They'll be just like that young rich fool. Mm. He said, look, I tell you what. Sell everything you have. Oh. Right? He said, and give it to the poor and then come follow me. Now this is Jesus talking. Mm. He said, and you'll have riches in heaven. Jesus promised it. He said, if you do this right now, just sell everything you have and give it to the poor and come follow me. He said, you will have riches in heaven. The Bible said that man put his head down and walked off. Why? He said, the price is too high. Well, what is the price of your salvation? He said, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Apparently, he wouldn't give his little money temporary money oh, no. <laughs> to get eternal life. Oh, okay. Amen. Jesus is offering us the eternal. We want the temporary. Oh, okay. Amen. But it's only when we put the cross and the yoke together. Come on now. Amen. That we can see a true picture oh. of real discipleship. Yes. See, you can't have the cross without the yoke. Yes. You can't say I surrender to Jesus. But I'm not going to have no service. I'm not going to do no service for him. You can't say I'm serving Jesus, but I haven't surrendered to him. That's in vain. You're wasting your time. So you have to put that cross and that yoke together. Mm -hmm. That's true discipleship. Right. That's a real no, okay. disciple. Yes. Amen. So that's number one. Amen. Number two is we have to continue... In his word. Uh -huh. He said in St. John 8 and 31, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. indeed. Yes. He said it. It's simple. He said that you'll know the truth. Why? Because you continue in my word. And I am the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Becoming a real disciple of Jesus is, is much like a marriage. Uh -huh. See, he... Uh, we can drive it home right now. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's easy in a marriage to have the ceremony. Uh -huh. You see it all the time on TV. Uh -huh. Marry me now. Yeah. 90 day fiance. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Married at first sight. Right. Yeah. Why? Because it means nothing to them. They ain't going to be married two days. Come on now. They don't know what a marriage is. Amen. But a marriage ceremony is, is easy. You know, going dressing up and everybody having a good time. You had a honeymoon. Amen. You consummate the marriage. All of that's good. But that's not the marriage. That's the marriage ceremony. Right, right. That's a marriage reception. The marriage comes after that. Amen. And the marriage is a lifetime commitment. Amen. See, that's what a disciple of Jesus Christ is a lifetime commitment. Amen. Followed by continuing relationship. And we know how marriages work. My wife and I have been married for 39 years. Amen. Yes. 39 years of ups and downs. Valley. And heels to come out. Yes. Highs and lows. Yes. Right? Yes. But we have, we made a decision when we got married that it was going to be for life. Amen. Amen. But that's what a, a disciple of Jesus, a real disciple, yes. is like a marriage. It's a lifetime commitment. Mm. Amen. That's how it compares to that. The Bible says we are what? The bride of Christ. And in biblical days, what they did, they were they were uh, set up to marry, right? The marriages were set up. And they have a betrothal. So even before you got married, when you were betrothed, and they said that was going to be your wife, then the husband would leave and go prepare a home and then he would come back and get his wife. Lord. Right? 
Well, that's what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Come on now. Yeah. He said, when I go, I'm coming again to receive you on myself. Yeah. And where I am, you may be also. Yeah. Why? Because we're the bride of Christ. Come on now. He says the same thing we were doing back then. So he said, now while I'm gone, you can't be chipping. Come on now. Can't be dealing with all the guys now. Yeah. All right. You got to stay faithful. Yeah. Amen. And when I come back, if I come back and find out you ain't been faithful, <laughs> Amen. Say that. But listen, to continue in God's word means to continue to learn the word of God as long as we have breath in our body. Amen. This is why we have so many people who are not real disciples. Because they don't want to have anything to do with the word of God. Amen. You see, the purpose of the reading and studying God's word is not uh, so we can become so knowledgeable and you know receive all this knowledge so we can impress uh, one another. That's not the reason for studying the Bible Amen. at all. So we can impress people, let them know how much we know about the Bible. That's not the reason. Mm -hmm. Amen. The purpose of studying the Bible is real simple. It's to change our lives. Amen. See, if you want to become more and more like Christ, you have to deal with more and more of Christ's word. Yeah. Why? Because the word is Christ. Yeah. The Bible said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Remember? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So he said you can't say you want to, all of me and none of my word. Why? Because I am the word. Yeah. So you got people who they, they may attend church. They don't have nothing to do with Bible study. Well, that's what the learning is. That's where the change is. Tell you right now. Amen. We all need it. Amen. And it, it means something. It matters. Amen. So we need to just continue in his word. That's what he's saying. That's number two. And if we continue in his word, then the next step is, is, is relatively easy. But it's very important. And it's one hard for us to do because we don't feel like it. And number three is we need to choose to love. Why do I say choose to love? St. John 13, 34, and 35. Mm, he said what? He said, uh, I'm giving you a new commandment. Right? He said that you love one another. Amen. That I've loved you. Ain't that what he said? That's right. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. But then he said something very profound. He said, and this way. By this, not by your preaching in the pulpit, Lord Almighty God. <laughs> not by how well you sing on the choir, Lord, not how by how well you pray, no. not by how well you come to church. By this, everybody will know Lord, that you are my disciples mm -hmm. by your love you have for one another. The yes. churches we know are jacked up. Yes, they jacked up. Clicks. People won't talk to each other, walking by each other every day. It's a whole bunch of mess. Amen. But Jesus said people don't need to see your love you have for one another. That's how they're going to know that you are my disciple. And we know as well as others, when we go somewhere and things are all jacked up and people ain't talking and a whole bunch of strife, we don't want to be there. We don't go back. We're like, oh, what's going on with that? You come to church and the people talking about the past. You, you knew. You just sit down there like, yeah, yeah, you can't. Uh, uh. <laughs> You'd be like, what is going on over here? I'm not coming up here no more. Mm -hmm. Amen. They tell you that's their friend's seat. You need to move. Well, where your friend at? Well, she not here yet, but she coming. In case she comes, you need to move. We're going to have to choose to love one another. Why? Because we don't feel like it. It's not about your emotions or how we feel, what we think. It's a choice we have to make. Amen. A, what denying ourselves. <laughs> we are commanded to love one another. Amen. And all three of these actions of volition, we choose to do them or not to do them. Amen. Amen. 
when we choose to love one another or not. Amen. We are not helpless victims, amen, of our own emotions. I know we like to act like I can't help it. And yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Amen. We can help it. We're not helpless victims of our own emotions. Amen. We are commanded to love because it is something we decide to do. Amen. Believe me, people have done things and boy, whoo, I wanted to damn on the head. I wanted to call fire down from heaven. Just blow them up. But then I had to go down on my knees and ask the Lord to forgive me. He said, son, I, I understand. I understand. But you know you're going to have to love him. I said, yes. Yes, Father. But forgive me. I got caught up in my emotions. But now I'm making the right choice. Amen. Why? Because I want to please you. Amen. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but the churches we attend and what we believe and how morally fit we are Amen. It's not what reveals the world that we are, we belong to God. That's not what reveals to them we belong to God. Our love for people is what reveals to people. Same thing that reveals to us that he was loved. Because he loved us in spite of ourselves. He said while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to get right. Lord, he didn't say, you know what? You're not going to make it. He said, look, I'm going to make a way for you right now. Even in your mess. He said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. Amen. He gave the world the right to judge us by our love. He said, if we don't do it, then they're not going to say that we are his disciples. Amen. But there's more. Real discipleship, amen, taking, being a real disciple and then taking on Jesus is two different things. You know, it's easy to say the sinner's prayer. Amen. It's not as easy to do what? Start denying ourselves. See, that's the easy part. Amen. But that that's, that's not the end of it. That's just the beginning. So number four, we have to live a cleansed life. And I'm not going to get through all of this, okay? So I'm going I'm to wrap it up right here. And we're going to finish it next week. Amen? Amen. But we have to live a, clean, live, live a cleansed life. That's not something we can do on our own people of God. We need the Spirit of God to do that. We need Jesus to do that. Hey, we need Him. Amen. So we need to, as much of the Word of God as we can get in our life. That's what we need. Why? Because to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ is, is not something that we can take lightly. It's not something that's going to happen automatically. It's just not going to happen like that. Amen. Amen. But in our text, we see, and I'm going to get back to it next week. Amen. What Jesus told us. He said that real discipleship is not about what we are able to do in Christ. Real, true discipleship is what Christ is able to do in us. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's an uh-huh moment. You need to yeah. write that down. Because yeah. yeah. we try to figure out everything we can do in Christ. He said, no. I'm trying to get you to surrender now. <laughs> so I can do something in you. See, we look at the stories, we read the stories about Paul and Peter and all of them making lame man walk, raising dead. We, he said the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. He said, I put it in, I put it in you. He said, so you have the power to do it. It's just that they got it. And you have it yet. Why? Because we have to surrender all to Jesus Christ. So he said, as I get ready to close, it was, it was very cool. Yes, Lord. He said, if you don't hate your mother, let me let me explain that before I finish. I don't just leave. 
I'm not understanding that part. Jesus is not advocating hate, especially not to your family and your mother and your parents and your kids. He's not doing that. Amen. He's not doing that. What he's doing is he's trying to get us to understand that any influence in our lives, Come on. okay, Come on. cannot outweigh the influence that he has right. over our lives. Yeah. See, our loved ones influence us the most. We'll do anything for mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mama follow a false god, we'll follow a false god. Uh, yeah. My mama go there. Oh. Okay? Uh -huh. I'm reminded how the senator was saying homosexuality was wrong, you know. It's a sin against nature. Mm -hmm. Then his daughter told him she was gay. Oh. Uh -huh. right Script the whole He scripted the, 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 the script. The script flipped, and boy, now that's the best thing ever happened. He's an advocate for uh, homosexuality. Jesus. Yes, yes, he's he's an advocate for it because he knows now. He said that's his daughter, and he loves her, and which is good. We know that's true. We know he loves her. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that. But he still cannot condone something. That is wrong. Amen. 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 So real discipleship people of God, as I close, demands planning. Amen. Jesus is not telling them to hate. What he's saying is, your commitment and obedience to me is going to look like you hate your family. They're going to feel like, well, you don't do nothing here. You're leaving, you're walking away from me. That's what he said. Amen. Amen. He's making an example. But he said it in that way so people who had ears to hear would hear what the Spirit was saying. He did the same thing when he told them, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, mm -hmm. right? You have no part of me. They turn around stuff. He said that in that way so the people who had ears to hear would hear what he was saying. And understand. Those who are in the natural won't understand. Amen. So we want to make sure that, and very sure that what we're doing is lined up with the Word of God. Don't do it because it seems right to you. It only seems fair. I love homosexual people. I have people in my family who a homosexual. Mm -hmm. We have good uh, relationship. They know who I am, and I know who they are. Mm -hmm. I respect them as a person, mm -hmm. but I will not accept Jesus. at all Come on. that lifestyle. Come on. I won't Man. promote it. I'm not going to no weddings. Yes. I'm not doing anything that looks like I promote it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. <laughs> and they should ex they should respect. My beliefs. Amen. See, we have a double standard in the world today. They want us to be tolerant, uh -huh. but they want to be totally intolerant when it comes to the yeah. Word of God. Yeah. But if you're going to be a real disciple of Jesus Christ, yeah. and you're going to walk in real discipleship, yeah. Jesus said, you're going to have to forsake yeah. all. Yeah. Amen? Amen? God bless you. One of them feel good messages, but that's all right. That's the truth. That's the truth. Amen. And it came straight from the mouth of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But we need to know what a real disciple of Jesus Christ looks like. Yes. Because there's too many people faking and shaking. Amen. All the way to they're going to be lost. Jesus. And as I read the book about Christless Christianity, that's what's going on in the world today. And people are flocking to it. People who know better. That's the falling away that the Bible talks about. He says it's going to be a falling away from the faith first. Then he's going to come. People who know better. But I just want to make sure that we in the solid rock. Yes, Lord. Around the nomination of church. Yes. Are being taught the truth of God's word.
So I want to end this broadcast without allowing those online the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ and those here today. That's what it, your desire. According to Romans 10, 9 and 10, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He said because with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He said with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Not with your mind, not with your head, with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Why? Because that changes a person's life. We think all kinds of stuff in our head. The battle is fought in our mind. Enemy is always manipulating our mind. Trying to get us to believe a lie. It's fought in our mind. But it's one on our knees. Yes. Yes. It's one on your knees. So all you got to do is repeat after me this simple prayer. Father God, I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, I believe Jesus Christ is your only begotten son. I believe he died on that cross for my sins. And I believe that on the third day you raised him from the dead. And I believe according to the Holy Scriptures. If I die believing in you, Lord Jesus, in my heart, that on the last day you'll raise me from the dead. So, Lord Jesus, I invite you to my heart. Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life. And I ask that you save my soul. In Jesus' name. According to the word of God, if you said that prayer, but more importantly, if you meant it in your heart, he promised that you would be born again and thou shalt be saved. Find your good Bible teaching church in Jesus Christ first place in your life. You can go to our website, the Solid Rock And we'll be glad to help you in your new life in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Sometimes we have to